tonight, the top two home cooks in Canada face off in the most spectacular culinary showdown this country has ever seen. You're watching the MasterChef Canada finale. This season, it all started with rice. Boxes of it were delivered all over Canada. Special delivery. Yay! And 24 home cooks were invited to Toronto no! to cook a rice dish for the judges. Only 12 home cooks moved forward. Yeah! And week after week, they battled to survive. Yeah! Cooking Woo! for a culinary legend. Hey, guys! For proud new Canadians. It's an honor to cook for you today. Yeah. For renowned pastry experts and passionate pastry eaters. One by one, 10 home cooks were eliminated. Now, only two remain. Tonight's first finalist is Taya, an insurance broker from Vancouver, British Columbia. Dear home cook. <laughs> Her first dish was not white apron worthy. Oh man, this is way harder than I thought. But her second dish blew the judges away. This dish is a complete knockout. Oh my God. Extraordinary. And after squeaking into the top 12. I got an apron. Taya threw herself into every challenge. Oh yeah, my arms are beginning to work out. Earning high praise from a special guest judge. I've never had anything like that. Good job, girl. Thank you. Despite her remarkable palate, Taya cooked in almost every pressure test. Why are my hands freezing up? And the stress started to take its toll. I know I'm going home. Why? Because you have to be perfect, and I wasn't. Eventually, Taya faced a tough decision. If you feel that you're not ready for this, you could actually decide to leave right now. I know I need to be more confident in myself. No more tears. And once her confidence caught up with her ability, she never looked back. Taya! Oh my god! Taya, Taya. Way to go, Taya. This tastes amazing. That looks perfect. <laughs> Thank God. This is wonderful. You nailed it. You know, Taya, I don't know what is more impressive, this dessert, or how you have transformed yourself. Thank you, Chef. I am so close to my dream, I could taste it. Now, there is nothing standing in Taya's way. Nothing except Trevor, a plumber gas fitter from Edmonton, Alberta. Woo! Now! Trevor emerged as an early front runner. Last week, I was driving a Zoom boom at my construction job. Now I'm cooking in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. I can't believe I'm top 12. He threw himself into the competition with a bang. The oven is shattered. There's no way I can recover from this. Trevor. But he did, and went on to win the first mystery box. This is rich. This is sophisticated. Week after week, Trevor continued to impress. Trevor. 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 Yes. Setting a new standard with his restaurant quality plating. It's a work of art. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a plumber gas fitter, chef. Your pipe work must be beautiful. <laughs> But at times, his confidence seemed excessive. They shouldn't save me. I want the judges to see my dish. I think my dish is gorgeous. On the outside, you seem like a very, almost arrogant. But I think on the inside, you're terrified. Trevor listened and learned, shedding his hat along with his attitude. My journey in the MasterChef Canada kitchen has taught me to put my ego aside. I feel that I'm cooking from the heart now. He became a valued team player. Plating right now, chef. And as the pressure increased, so did his will to win. I can see my dream right there, and I'm going to grab it. Congratulations, Trevor and Taya. Over the past several weeks, you proved to us and the country that you both deserve to be in the MasterChef Canada finale. Barry! What do you think about this matchup? This is gonna be something to watch. I wish I was down there doing it, but I'm so proud to be watching these two. May, what are you expecting tonight? I'm expecting Trevor to plate the most beautiful dishes ever, and I know Taya is gonna bring it with flavor. Taya and Trevor, there is another group of people that have supported you since you first dared to dream. Trevor, your family wouldn't miss this for the world. And here they are. 
your mum Valerie, your dad Dean, your stepmum Melody, your brother Justin, your grandparents Vicky and Bob. Congratulations, I'm just so proud of you. Taya, you've got a ton of family supporters too. Oh my God. Your mom, Donna, your dad, Les, your brothers Matthew and Timothy, and your boyfriend, Colin. So Trevor, apparently you have a very close relationship with your grandmother, and I hear she got you into cooking. She's where it all started. I can remember tripping over him when he was just a little boy. He always wanted to be in the kitchen. So Vicky, you knew that Trevor had a special talent from a very early oh, age. Yes. I'm happy that I can share this moment with the people that are closest to me, and that's my family. This is a moment for me to shine and for them to be proud of me. So, Taya, you have a picture of your grandparents to remind you of them during your cook. My Oma was my best friend, and she passed away just um, recently, and then my Opa just passed away as well. She loved making German food, and I, I watched her growing up and helped her, and so I know she's looking down right now and is very proud. I just miss my Oma so much, and uh, I know she would be just dancing up a storm if she was here. Families, thank you for helping us celebrate the end of this incredible journey. Please head up to the gallery. Kill it, baby. Love you. Good boy. Break a leg. Yeah. Bye, Grandpa. Taya, Trevor, tonight we want to see a magnificent three-course meal showcasing everything you've learned. You will have three hours to complete your entire meal, but this time we're going to make it much harder. These three hours will mimic the conditions and pressures of a professional restaurant. Your appetizers will be due at the one hour mark. Then we taste your appetizers in private. The same thing will happen with your entrees at the two hour mark and your desserts at the very end of the challenge. Unlike years past, that clock will not stop. You'll continue to work after your plates are served. There are zero stops in this cook. Three hours of straight up insane, breathtaking, pressure-filled cookery. Tonight, one of you is three courses away from being crowned Canada's next master chef. Trevor, Taya. Now have 10 minutes in the pantry to get everything you need. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time in the pantry starts now. <laughs> Gorgeous mangoes. Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. I'm rooting for Taya because she's grown so much throughout this competition. She is able to produce such good, flavorful food. Coriander. A whole swack of chilies. Trevor is a fantastic cook. He's efficient, he has a very contemporary plating style, and his flavors are on point. Love this, beautiful. I'm on Team Taya, because I think she has really put her entire heart and everything she's got in every cook. Trevor was born to be in the kitchen. He has so many tricks and techniques up his sleeves. It's really impressive. This is gonna be a pretty crazy showdown. Something's gonna explode in this kitchen. Trevor, what do you have in store for us? Today I'll be making octopus and chips as my appetizer. I'll be doing lamb two ways for my entree. And for my dessert, I'm gonna wrap it up with a fallen ice cream cone. Taya, what are you making for us? My appetizer is a Mexican street corn. My main is a pork cheek and pork belly tamale. And my dessert is a play on a cafe de olla. My strengths going into this competition are definitely plating. I'm like a wizard in the kitchen. I feel comfortable there. I'm not going home without the victory. This menu is gonna have flavor that punches the judges to the floor in a good way. I will definitely be taking home the trophy. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Then your time starts. Now. <laughs> 
these two menus sound spectacular. It seems to me as if they've taken comfort foods and their plan is to elevate it to MasterChef Canada standards. My entire menu is based on some of my very favorite childhood memories and dishes. My first dish is octopus and chips. It's a riff on fish and chips, which I had pretty much every Sunday at my grandmother's as a kid. This transports me right back to my childhood. Oh, having my family here is amazing. I feel the pressure, though. Go, 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 go. I grew up eating Latin American food at least twice a week. So I'm doing a Mexican street style corn panna cotta. Typically, you think of panna cotta as a dessert. She's turned it upside down and made an appetizer out of it, a savory approach to a panna That's cotta. That's a smart move. I'm also creating an amuse bouche, which is a watermelon shooter to kind of cleanse the palate. I am incredibly confident in these flavors. I gotta pound these tentacles, get them nice and tender, or else they're gonna be really hard and not enjoyable to eat. Octopus are very, very difficult to cook. You know, you can be undercook it, it's very tough and chewy. And if you overcook it, it's dry and chewy. There you go. And I think he's gonna put it into a pressure cooker. It takes a long time to get the perfect cook on that octopus. That is gonna be right down to the wire. I'm gonna get my octopus in the pressure cooker for exactly 30 minutes. The irony in the situation is, I'm literally in a big pressure cooker. Thirty minutes until the first dish must come out. I tell you, this challenge, it's a marathon. We're still in the appetizer round, but I see Taya. She's getting her pork belly into the pressure cooker. It's important to get this going now so that it's nice and tender by the time I take it out for the entree. That is really smart. That'll give her lots of time to get it cooked, tender, and juicy. I know that even with a pressure cooker, pork will take some time. So I want to throw it in the appetizer so I don't have to worry about it in the entree round. Trevor, how you doing? Chef, I'm doing good. What stage are you at right now? Well, right now, I got my pressure cooker on for my octopus. This is some lemon aioli I'm going to be making. It smells great already. Thank you. I hear that you have a photograph uh, of someone that's oh, inspiring you. There we go. So that is my aunt Tracy. She actually uh, owned a catering company her entire life. And as early as I can remember, I was bussing tables for her and making roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. How old were you when you were doing that? Uh, nine, 10 years old. Good luck. Remain focused. Thank you, Chef. Go, Taya. Hi there, Taya. Chef Michael. So three hours, three courses. Yes. A lot to get done. A lot to get is done. Is there one element that is going to give you the biggest concern? The panna cotta setting is my biggest concern. So as long as that goes well, I think I'll be OK. And I see you are doing something to the corn here. I'm just roasting the corn so they get a nice char. There'll be a layer on top of the panna cotta. It'll look like Mexican street style corn. But then when you cut into it, it'll be a nice creamy corn panna cotta. Interesting. Good luck with it. Thank you, Chef. Good job, Tay. You got it, Taya. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes left. I have to nail the cook on the octopus. There is no room for error. Anything less, anything more, and this could sink me. Here is a defining moment for Trevor. I pull the octopus out of the pressure cooker. It is perfect. It's so tender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How am I doing, guys? Great. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm on track. And I know I have enough time to make every plate perfect. But the panna cotta is absolutely vital. If my panna cotta doesn't set, it's just like this the blob. And I might as well just give the first round to Trevor. Oh my gosh. Looking good. Ooh. Okay, wait, it's crumbling. The look I'm going for is a whole piece of charred corn on top of the panna cotta. This isn't good. It's falling apart. I got to get this off. She's really struggling with the corn there. Come on, Taya. I just need to pick my other corn and pray for the best. 
This one's good. This one's good. Five minutes. You have five more minutes left. Both cooks are bringing this down to the wire. I mean, Taya has already started plating. Her dish looks incredible. Trevor's got nothing on his plates right now. My strategy is to produce very artistic dishes that have a story, and that takes a lot of time. Trevor loves his fine details. He just loves to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Stay focused, buddy. Oh, yeah. Trevor, let's go! One minute! You have one more minute left. Come on, you guys. You can get it done. You got this, girl. You got it. You got this, Taya. Come on, you got this! Trevor, yeah! It's down to the wire on every plate. This is the most pressure I've ever felt in this kitchen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And hands up. That was intense. Right. Absolutely gorgeous, Trevor. Woo! All right. Trevor and Taya. Please keep working. Your appetizers look fantastic, and we can't wait to try them. The judges will now head into the dining room to privately taste both appetizers, while the home cooks continue with the entree round. I feel like I nailed the appetizer round. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. It's exactly how I wanted it to taste. Trevor should be incredibly scared, because I know it tastes good, I've been studying plating, and it definitely shows in my appetizer. First is Trevor's braised and grilled octopus with purple and gold fingerling potatoes and a deconstructed lemon tartar sauce. So immediately, I could see this is a dish that Trevor thought very carefully about. This says elevated cuisine to me. But let's see how it tastes. Wow, that's... Incredible. The octopus is cooked to perfection. It's fresh, it's clean, it's tender. He was able to get the octopus to have a great flavor from that broth that he cooked it in. I think it could have done with a little bit more charring on that grill just to give it a little bit more crispness and a touch of smokiness to it. The flavors of the aioli are incredibly bright and very, very tasteful. And the potato chips, nice and crispy, thin, perfect size. Next up is Taya's appetizer a Mexican street-style corn with a corn panna cotta, zucchini blossoms, a jalapeno lime puree, and a watermelon and mint amuse-bouche. To me, it's clear that Taya has managed to elevate her plate presentation. I think this dish is her defining moment. We have never seen a more elegant, beautifully presented dish from Taya until now. And we have an amuse-bouche as well. Wow, great beginning. The panna cotta is very good. A little on the sweet side, you get that big hit of corn and that charred corn on top. I thought it was just a very clever way to do it. This dish, I cannot see anything wrong with it. And this is very, very rare. Uh, coming from a demon chef, you get all the different tastes. You got the sweet, this balancing of the acidity from the crema, you know, a little bit of hit slice at the end. The combination, it's amazing. She has really captured Latin American cuisine here. Well, gentlemen, let's get back into the kitchen and see what Taya and Trevor are up to for their main course. I have absolutely no idea what the judges think of my appetizer. And quite frankly, I kind of like it because it doesn't distract me. Neither of us knows what the outcome of our dishes were. It just pushes you harder to pump out the next dish even better. My main course is gonna be lamb two ways. I'm gonna be serving it with a celery puree. I'm gonna be braising lamb shanks, and I'm gonna be braising lamb tongue. Both of my cuts take a really long time to cook, so I'm going with the pressure cooker again. I think the trickiest meat to cook in a pressure cooker is the lamb. There's less fat, and if you overcook that, it's gonna become stringy and dry. It's a lot of added pressure, so I'm hoping for the best. I need to get my ice cream on. Taya is displaying incredible time management. She's getting her ice cream for her dessert in the entree round. 
My ice cream is gonna take a really long time, so I wanna get that started right away so that if there is any problems with it in the final round, I can improvise and change it up. Trevor should be multitasking like Taya is in order to stay on top of things. I think Trevor is gonna be in trouble. Timing is my worst enemy on this entire challenge, but I thrive under pressure, so I'm loving it. Pineapple, where's my pineapple? For the main, I'm doing a braised pork cheek tamale ball with crispy pork belly and pineapple mole. I'm no longer the girl that got the second chance and just barely made it in. I'm now the best of the best. You can't question that. I'm in the finale. <laughs> You know, mole sauce is one of the mother sauces in Mexican cuisine. It is very difficult to get right. It's about really balancing spices, heat, not an easy task. Oh, it's spicy. Got a little steam coming from your ears, dear. It's important for me to nail this lamb for my mama up there watching down. She's the one that introduced me to lamb, and I just want to make her proud today. <laughs> I want to win so bad, my food dream is to open a restaurant. I'm not sure what kind of restaurant. I can tell you it's going to be called Valerie's, though, named after my mama. No boy, Trev. Stay close, kid. Hey, he's pulling your pork bellies out. Whoa. Whoa. Good, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Taya, so you got your pork belly in, I noticed, in the first round. Yes. That was a smart move. Look at the juice coming out of that. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it, Chef. So what are these balls that you're making? This is the pulled pork cheek with um, the mole sauce. and stuffing the tamale and frying it. This is the most elevated cooking I have seen you do in this competition. I'm trying hard to impress you guys. Why did you wait? You know, I think it took me a while to get my confidence in the kitchen. And now that I'm able to cook what I want to cook, I want to show you guys that I mean business. I'm already impressed. Thank you, Keep Chef. Keep it up. Thank you, Chef. This win would be golden ticket to my food dream. I want to be a food critic. I mean, I got a good palate. I might as well use it, right? 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes left. Just got to get that puree going. The tables have completely turned. Taya is cool, calm, and ready. And Trevor is trying to play catch up. I'm way behind. I'm rushing to get this finished. Look, look, look. It's caught fire. I look over, and my entire pressure cooker is in flame. I put too much port wine in my lamb al sabuco. Whenever you add alcohol into a pot, always make sure that pot starts cold. If it's a very hot pot, it can ignite right away and can take away a lot of hair, like Michael. I mean, <laughs> I had to restart it up. I lost a good 10, 15 minutes of pressure cooking time. You got it. You got it, Trevor. I hope my lamb shanks are tender. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. What the heck's happening? I'm deep frying my tamale balls. And when I turn and look, the deep fryer is not to temperature. Shit, stupid fryer. The fryer is still the quickest way to cook this. No going back. I have to stick with the plan. OK, excuse me a minute. I looked down at my lamb, and I couldn't be happier. It's exactly how I envisioned. Beautiful. Get it going, buddy. All right. He's running out of time. <sighs> my lamb reduction, I got to get reduced before it goes on the plate. It's too fatty. It's too whiny. I'm cutting it really close. I mean, this is a sauce that needs usually hours of reduction. He's going to try and do it in minutes. He is really pushing it now. Keep an eye on that for me. Pull it together. I got to get back on track. I got to be able to plate. My plating is everything. In five minutes, the server will be coming for the entree. Hot, hot. I'm getting frazzled because I don't have that much time to plate. Look at the focus right now. This is next level. You got this, Trevor. Five, four, three, two, one, and a 
Unreal. We get to taste, and they have to keep cooking. So let's go, guys. Uh, I am getting tired. But I need to keep on going. Trevor's not letting up, so I can't let up. The exhaustion is kicking in, but this is the biggest cook of my life. There's no way that I'm giving up. All comes down to this. The first entree the judges will taste is Trevor's braised lamb shank and lamb tongue with celery act puree and vegetables. Judging from looks alone, this is a piece of art. It has this progression of from color to meat. I just love this. He's plating like a true professional chef. Always has, and I think that's one of his strengths. The flavors of the lamb shank, I think, are wonderful. Great depth of flavor. It is cooked beautifully. I would have loved a little bit more of that braising liquor as a sauce reduced and poured over it. His celery root puree, creamy, delicate, well-seasoned, really nice. The shank, nice and tasty. Nine tongue was nice, soft, and tender. I love these little beetroots. That's an extra touch, earthiness to a dish. I love this dish. The vegetables, I think, are world class. Perfectly cooked, perfectly cleaned. It's really smart. There's not one ingredient out of place. Absolute perfection. Next up is Taya's entree. Braised pork belly and pork cheek tamale ball and a pineapple mole. It doesn't look as good as the appetizer. The color of the tamale ball is a bit light. It doesn't have that golden look that you would expect from a deep fried item. I do think it's a playful take. I love the colors on the plate. It does say Mexico to me. And now it's all down to how it's going to taste. Wow. Boy, Taya can cook. I mean, the flavors here. The pork belly, I think, is porkalicious. Other than I think it could have been pan fried a touch to be a little bit more crispy. The mole, beautiful combination. The spice is just right. And she's very, very good with heat. But tamari ball, it's hard, it's doughy, and the pole pork inside, it's dry. I know tamales really well. This tamale is actually raw. Great idea, but you know, the execution was not there. Taya is clearly masterful when it comes to spices and seasoning. She has nailed the flavors of Mexico. That, to me, makes this dish a real knockout. We better get out there and see what's going on in the kitchen. Yeah. Bring it home. Oranges are going to be a little tough at me. This is the last round of a three-hour marathon. You can see that the home cooks are starting to feel the heat. Oh my god, it's like a bomb went off in here. I'm doing a play on uh, traditional Mexican coffees. I'm doing a orange sponge cake, a cinnamon ice cream, and a dusting of espresso powder. Tight on time. All comes down to this. My dessert is a really rich dark chocolate mint gelato and a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone. Both Taya and Trevor are making ice cream, but Taya started her ice cream when she was plating her main course. It's delicious, cinnamon ice cream. Whereas Trevor is just starting his ice cream base now. I am cutting it so close for time on this dessert, this might bite me in the butt. Honey, put this in the box. Thank God the ice cream started because I still got to do a cake, a toffee, a mousse, a caramel. I got a lot of things going on. I need to get this done. I'm doing a play on a fallen ice cream cone with the flavors of chocolate and mint. Trevor, yes, how chef. you doing? I'm doing all right, chef. Tell me, what are you making? So right now I'm making a creme fraiche whipped cream with no sugar. It's going to be very tart because I have a really, really rich dark chocolate mint ice cream going with this. Going back to my childhood, this is a, a play on. The kid just gets his ice cream cone at the stand and he drops it. It's all over the sidewalk. It's going to be very abstract and splattery. I like where you go with food. There's always a concept behind it. Let me ask you, though, do you think that this is elevated enough to win the trophy and the title? 100% chef. This is going to be a knockout dessert, but showing restraint and sophistication at the same time. Let me give you some advice. Don't look back. Just keep looking ahead. Thank you, Chef. It means a lot to me. Looking good, Trev. 
Hi, Taya. Chef Alvin. So what are you doing? Right now, I am working on a sponge toffee. OK. So you're doing an elevated coffee dish, right? More the flavors that are in traditional Mexican coffee, orange, cinnamon, chocolate. I love the orange and the coffee. Sounds amazing. Do you drink a lot of coffee? I love coffee. You're becoming a chef already. I can tell you, chef just drank coffee all day long. <laughs> There's a lot of component in this dish. Remember, you only have 20 minutes. Yes. Thank you, chef. You know, I'm a bit worried. There's a lot of element on that plate, Ugh. and I hope hey, uh, that's the energy for sure. I'm going to die. So Trevor he is making pizzelles. It is really, it's like an Italian wafer-thin cookie that can be shaped once it's hot into a cone. Perfect for ice cream. And yes, let's go! Boy. Ten minutes! Taya's cake is out of the oven now. That's got to be a sigh of relief for her. I need to cool my cakes. Now I need to plate. I'm good. Look at the way Trevor's plating. Trevor is an artist. My hands are shaking like a leaf. I know I need to make sure my plating is absolutely beautiful. There are five minutes left. In five minutes, the MasterChef Canada kitchen will be closed. I go to my ice cream machine, and it's nowhere near being frozen. How's it looking, Trev? Fuck. Trevor is starting to panic because his ice cream is not setting. He's not going to have enough time to set it. If I don't nail this ice cream, I just have a chocolate puddle on a plate. I need to get this ice cream really cold. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant. Two minutes. You only have two more minutes left. Two minutes. Come on, Carol. You can do it. I'm going to do a little mousse. Oh my god, that looks amazing. That ice cream and that liquid nitrogen, it's got to come out right about now. Otherwise, it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I got to keep pushing hard to get this dessert out. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up and needing a shake. Taya has just poured her ice cream from the blast freezer, and she has Jeez. one minute to make canals and get it on the plate. This is so much pressure, but I got to shake it off because I need to make the best damn dessert that these judges have ever tasted. There we go. There he goes, coming out. Yay! Wow, he's doing it. Now, it's time to taste your third and final course. Please follow us into the banquet room to present your dishes. I put my heart on this plate. Good or bad, I stand by my plate today. I never in a million years would have imagined I could do the things that I've done here. It's mind-blowing. Before we taste your desserts, we'd like to tell you how your culinary stories have unfolded this far. Trevor, we loved your fish and chips and how you elevated it. The octopus was perfectly cooked and beautifully flavored. Thank you, Chef. Now, Taya, your Mexican street corn appetizer. It was incredible. Oh, thank you. That plate looked beautiful. Not just your best plate, by one of the best looking plates we've seen in this competition. And now for the entrees. Trevor, your lamb two ways was plated flawlessly. Your lamb tongue was perfectly cooked. The sauce was excellent, but we certainly could have done with a touch more of it. And Taya, your pork belly and pork tamale dish 
featured those big, bold South American flavors that I love. Thank you, chef. But the tamale bowl was a little bit undercooked and was just a tad on the dry side. So there you have it, two culinary stories, and we can't wait to find out how they end. Trevor made a better competitor out of me because I had to push myself really hard to compete with him. Hearing Taya's feedback on her dishes, it makes me really nervous. Her flavors are in your face and bold, and I had more subtle flavors. It could go either way. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint, really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors, that big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. All right, Taya, tell us about your dessert. My dessert is a play on a cafe de olla. So I did a orange cake with a sponge toffee, dark chocolate mousse, and a cinnamon ice cream. Mm. Watching the judges is like the worst and the best all wrapped together because you really don't know what they're thinking. It's like an emotional roller coaster. Taya, first thing, I gotta compliment you on your plating. Thank you, Chef. You've been able to create a great sense of balance, proportion, color to create this one dessert. And that's, that's not easy. The flavors are classic Taya. They're big, they're bold. There's a lot of flavor happening on one plate. Taya, you got a lot of lovely elements on this dish. Ice cream, cinnamony, smooth, creamy. The caramel, buttery, but what was the name of the dessert? Cafe de Oya. I did not get the cafe. But overall, great job. But I would have preferred a little bit more coffee in my coffee dessert. Understood, Chef. Taya, Trevor, you did an extraordinary job tonight. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. We need some time to discuss your culinary journey. This is never easy. You have to take so much into account when you're making big, weighty decisions like this. It has to be the culmination of the entire journey of the three-course meal. And this one is tough. I poured my heart into this, my soul. I want to win so bad. The question is, which out of the two home cooks told a cohesive story? I am so close to my food dream, and I'm just dying to find out. We have to choose somebody. And I think that somebody had a better culinary story. Trevor and Taya, a few months ago, you left your jobs to come here. And up to now, cooking was a pastime that you were very good at. But throughout this journey, you both made a discovery. For you two, cooking is a passion and a calling. And it's what both of you were born to do. And tonight, you earned the right to come up here and change places with us. MasterChef Canada is all about the journey. I've been in every cook except one. I've progressed throughout the entire competition, and now I'm here because of hard work and a dream. When I walked into this kitchen, I was kind of cocky. Today, I definitely have grown to trust myself as a cook, as a person. I can honestly say I'm very humbled by this experience. As you know, only one of you can become Canada's next master chef. And that's never been a more difficult fact for us to contend with. In each course, you excelled in different ways. So we needed to consider the three core stories that you told as a whole. And one drew us in 
a little more deeply with its creative twists and turns. The home cook who took us on that journey tonight will win $100,000. This trophy and a life-changing title. This year's winner and Canada's new master chef is... Trevor. Did it. It's beautiful. <laughs> you did it with flying colors. I am Canada's newest master chef. I did it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Winning this has kick-started my food dream. I'm really happy for Trevor, but I still feel like a winner. This has been the best journey I've ever had. Nothing's gonna stop me from pursuing my food dream right now. Nothing, absolutely nothing. My life is changing as we speak. Goodbye plumbing, hello cooking. Woo!